Detective Duncan, do you recognize the message in front of you? I do. And do you recall what email this was associated with? This was an email uh, associated with kkwalker75 at yahoo.com. It was a copy of this located on Charles Vallow's device? Yes, it was. Could you read that for the jury? It could be possible to have a hard copy to look at. Uh, if the court will allow it, I do have a hard copy available. Yes, that's fine as long as it comports with what's being displayed on the screen. And I will indicate for the record the printout uh, that the detective is being handed was printed directly from the PowerPoint. Okay. With that in mind then, uh, and obviously we can follow along with what's on the screen, I'll allow him to have that printed copy and review from that. Thank you. So the email reads as follows. Hello, Chad. I hope you are doing well. This is Charles Vallow from Arizona. We really enjoyed having you stay with us back in November when you came to the Preparing of People conference. I appreciated you ta uh, taking the time to talk to me about the book I've been working on. Well, more than six months later, I still haven't made much progress on it, but I feel an urgency to get it done. As the managing partner of Wright Planning Group, I'm going to have the opportunity to speak at various conventions beginning in the fall. But everyone says I need to have a book available that summarized my life and shares the principles I follow. So I will cut to the chase. I am willing to pay you well to help me get this book into shape as a ghostwriter. I really liked your, auto your autobiography and the tone you took in sharing experiences without, pre without preaching. Is there any way you could come here for a couple of days and help me get the book underway? I feel talking in person would be much more valuable than a phone call or video chat, mainly because I would like you to read through some of my journals and explain to me how the publishing industry works. It would help me know whether I truly have a book in me and whether you want to team up on it. I played minor league baseball and have had plenty of stories that my audience could relate to, along with the knowledge I've gained running my own company. So I do feel the book would contain valuable information even beyond the convention circuit. I'm out of town until Sunday, but I would gladly fly you down here early next week before the holiday and cover your expenses. You can stay at our guest room like before, or in a hotel if you, if, you, if you prefer. I hate to take you away from your family, but I know this book is vital to, to my speaking success. I understand if you don't want to take part in the project, but I would definitely make it worth your time. With admiration, Charles. And you indicate this came from an email, kkwalker75 at yahoo.com? That is correct. Did you do any kind of investigation to try to determine who the owner of that account was? So I authored a search warrant to Yahoo. Um, I was able to obtain the subscriber information for this account, account of kkwalker75 at yahoo.com. The name associated with the account was Karen Walker. The IP uh, address or the internet provider address associated with the account came back to Katy, an area of Katy, Texas. Also, the phone number associated with the account uh, came back to Lori Vallow. The date of birth on the account came back to a variation of Lori Vallow's date of birth. Was there any indication that this email account was linked to Charles Vallow? There is no indication. In going through Charles' phone further, did you locate anything regarding whether or not Charles actually sent that email? There's nothing to indicate that Charles uh, sent this email to or from his device, KK Walker. However, he did forward this email uh, to um, Adam, uh, Lori's brother, as well as um, discuss the email with Lori through, through text messages. And um, looking at the next page there. Yes. Are these some of the messages that you were referring to? Yes. Uh, Charles had discovered this email um, on June 29th of uh, 2019. 
he then forwarded it to, to Adam and then confronted Lori about this email that was sent. Uh, based on my observations of Charles's email or his accounts that were um, analyzed, um, like I said, there's no indication that this came from, from Charles' account, was created by Charles or sent to, to Chad. Um, to the best of my knowledge, looking through Charles' information, he had no uh, relationship with Chad Daybell at all. And if you could, would you read the messages on those and just indicate who they are coming to and going, yes. who they are being sent to? The first one is Charles to Lori. It was uh, time stamped June 29th, 2019 at 5.51 a.m. The UTC is a universal um, coordinated time, and the minus 7 is done to, to show that that would be the Arizona time. So at 5.51 on June 29th, 2019, it says, Is he with whom you're having an affair? He did not stay with us in Arizona in November. Who are you lying to now? Trying to destroy another family? You're evil, period. I may take JJ back to Houston unless you have a great explanation for all of this. I will not let him be a party to your apostasy. Charles Talori again at 6.04 a.m. Just so you know, I have Tammy's, Chad's wife's email address. I will send a copy of my email you sent to KK Walker. Tammy will know what you're up to. You better explain. Charles Talori at 6.10. I now have Tammy Daybell's cell number. I'll text her a copy of the letter and, a, and an explanation of what you're up to. You have till noon your time to explain or, I'll, or I'm sending via text and email to her. At 6.55, Charles sends Lori a message. I'm sure you are up by now. You have until 10 a.m. your time to respond or I send the emails and texts to Tammy. Charles to Lori at 12.23 p.m. Just so you and Chad know, I am going to talk to Tammy in person if I have to. I've already emailed and texted her. Your game is up. Charles to Lori at uh, 5.04 p.m. Please stop spending money on the credit cards. I appreciate it. I was, uh, in looking at Charles' phone extractions, uh, was able to determine that two emails were sent to Tammy Daybell, uh, one to her personal email and also one to her uh, work email. Yeah, I apologize. I'm having trouble hearing uh, counsel. If she could just move the mic a little bit closer. I had actually muted it, so I oh, apologize. Okay. Thank you for saying that. Um, looking at that next page there, are those the emails that you were referring to? Yes, they are. And would you read those into the record? The email from uh, Charles Vallow to Tammy Daybell at the uh, tdaybell at sugarsalem.com would be her work email on June 29, 2019 at 916. Tammy, my name is Charles Vallow. I have some vital and disturbing information regarding your husband and my wife, Lori. This is your work email, so I'll wait to send you the evidence that is very disturbing. You may call or email me from the address where you can receive the information. I apologize to be the one sending this, but something has to be done. I feel it's best if I shed some light on this issue. Regards, Charles Vallow, and he provides the phone number of 714-853-5005. He sends a second email uh, from his uh, Charles at Wright Planning Group email address to tammy.daybell at gmail.com on June 30th at uh, 2019 at 1016 a.m. The subject line in the email is your husband and my wife and the body of the email reading are having an affair. Her name is Lori Vallow. I've got definite proof or definitive proof uh, if you care to see it. Contact me and I'll share it with you. It's devastating, I know, but the truth needs to be shown. Charles Vallow. 
And from your review of the device, were you able to determine whether or not Tammy Daybell would have actually read these emails? I did contact at least Sugar Salem uh, School District and asked if those were read. Um, there's no indication that they were. They said they could have been deleted, read and deleted, or just deleted, but there's no indication. They do show on Chad's part to be sent, though. Uh, and you said Chad's part. I'm sorry, on uh, on Charles's part. My apologies. Um, were you able to determine whether or not there was any communication from Charles Vallow to Chad Daybell? Yes, on the 29th of June, uh, 2009, the uh, PowerPoint actually, it's 209, should be 2009, at 9.32 a.m. Charles sends uh, Chad Daybell a message at chad.daybell at gmail.com. The message reads, Chad, I'm Lori's husband, but I gathered you already knew this. She sent an email yesterday, supposedly written by me to K.K. Walker, inviting you to Arizona next week and to ghostwrite a book I'm supposed to be working on or supposedly working on. It's preposterous. I happened to run across it as she left her computer at our Houston home. I am not paying anybody for anything and will not be right. It will. And I'm not writing a book. Either you or Lori need to tell me what's going on or this will be exposed for all to see. Regards, Charles Vallow. And again, leaves the number 714-853-5005. Goes on to read, and does your wife know you have several of Lori's dance videos? Explain how that is any way, any way appropriate. She sent them to you at your request in January, Charles. Were you able to locate any response from Chad Daybell to Charles' email? There was no response. Did you also locate messages from Charles to Lori? Yes, there were many messages uh, between Charles and Lori um, on the 29th uh, arguing about this particular letter that was sent. Do you also recall uh, the next slide locating that message on the phone? Yes, I do. And could you read that message? The message from Charles to Lori on June 30th, uh, I believe that should be 2019, uh, of 840, 0842. Uh, Lori, I know you don't care how I feel, but just imagine this. How could my actions or breaking your heart result in what you've done? You accuse me of infidelity, but it's you who have been having an affair. It just keeps killing me. Maybe that's your goal. How can you live with yourself destroying our life, Mel and Brandon's? Probably Mel and Brandon too. Now add Chad Daybell family and you've got a home run. The fact you will continue to go to the temple after all you've done shocks me. There really is something wrong with you. I really don't want to do what I have to do, but you have to be exposed for what you, for what you really are. You won't even deny it or talk to me as to your reasons. That's what's amazing to me. You could ally some of what's about to happen, but I don't think you will. Lying has become second nature to you. You have been impressive in blaming me for all that's happened. You have destroyed me. I've never seen, I've never been lower in my life. It's you that has done it. Please tell me why, please. I will slow or minimize what's about to happen. It's you who has caused it. We have a son to raise, but that's all we have in common. I will work with you in his best interest and will be there Monday evening. You owe me an apology for all the false accusations you've made. You know, I've been entirely faithful to you since the first day we met. I deserve an apology from you. Please respect that much. And you indicated that message when you located it would have been sent on June 30th of 2019? Correct. From your review of Charles' phone, did he appear to be trying to work on his relationship with Lori? Uh, in reviewing Charles' phone, there was a lot of, obviously, frustration and anger that he would start with. Um, but then he would come back to a, a loving, gentle side and wanting to work things out and be more reasonable. If you would.
Was Lori always responsive to his messages? Not always. Um, in this particular case, there was no, uh, I didn't see any denial or, or acceptance of the uh, particular email that was sent, um, but they would still converse with each other. And looking at the next page there, are those also additional messages that were located? Yes, the additional messages uh, going into July, uh, July 1st, 2019 at 1031. Charles to Lori, I'm going to Idaho first to meet with Tammy Daybell. Lori responds to Charles uh, a minute later. She won't see you. She is my friend. She won't listen to you. Go ahead. You are ridiculous. Are you coming to JJ for the fourth or not? Charles responded to Lori uh, July 1st, 2019 at 1037. Then you tell me why you used my name and and fictitious email to send a BS email about a book. I am having him ghostwrite for me. It's fraud and a lie. There's no reason for it other than to get him in Arizona and have an excuse for his wife. Charles Tolori, July 1st at 1038. You did this. I had nothing to do with it, and you know it. Also, he did not stay with us in November. I will find out. And those messages are sent on July 1st of 2019? That is correct. And when did you respond to the report of a shooting? We responded to the report of the shooting on July 11th of 2019. And when, and just to remind the jury from yesterday, when you arrived, Charles Vallow was in fact deceased? Yes, he was. Looking at that next page, did you also locate those messages on Charles' device? We did, yes. And can you read those messages? Uh, this would be the uh, July 11, 2019, shortly before the murder of Charles Vallow. At uh, between 7.35 and 7.37 in the morning, Charles sent uh, Adam Cox a message that says, Al is here. Adam responded at Lori's. Adam then say, states, really? I wonder why he, when, why he never called me back. Adam said, they are planning something. Charles responded, absolutely. Adam then responds, I was supposed to spend the night at, at his house last night. She probably blocked that. And then Charles responded, what you do is up to you. After that message, are there any other messages from Charles to anyone? After that message, there are no other messages. There are messages sent to the phone, but nothing was read by Charles at that point. And those messages took place on July 11th, 2019, between 7.35 a.m. and 7.37 a.m.? Correct. And in addition, uh, Charles' phone had his location services on, and the location... No, I'm going to object. This is non-responsive to the question. He's, he's adding. Thank you. Were you able to determine anything else from Charles Vallow's phone? Yes. And what was that? Charles had his location services on, and the location uh, of that device at the time those messages were sent was at the 5531 South Four Peaks Place in Chandler, where the homicide took place. Your Honor, I would next go to what has been marked as State's Exhibit 48. And I believe both counsel and the court have a copy. And, Your Honor, would you like the jump drive marked with an exhibit <clears throat> sticker as well to match the paper printout? I think that would be helpful, yes. Your Honor, one of our one of my co-counsel will get that marked and submitted for the court. Okay. Yeah. 
And Detective, I believe you've been handed that exhibit. Yes, ma'am. I, I believe it should be Exhibit 48. Is that what it says on the back? That is correct. Making sure we got you the right one. In looking at that, do you recognize what is on that? Yes, uh, the front is a, the address of Lori for style at iCloud.com and then four phone numbers that are associated with that account. And if you can flip through that. I just wanted to make sure. So the first four pages are the Lori for style, and then it, or five pages, and then it breaks into a different iCloud account. Do you want those separated or all together? Um, we'll keep them together okay. for now. Okay. Do you recognize the information located within those papers? I do. Do you recognize that as information that was located from a search that you did? I do. And what accounts were you looking at? So as indicated before, the first account I was looking at is Lori for style at iCloud.com. Uh, when looking through the Lori for style iCloud and examining the data from that iCloud account, I uncovered the iCloud, iCloud account of Lolly Time at iCloud.com. Did you also look through phone records for Ms. Allo? Yes, I did. And is some of the information in that slide uh, indicative of, and I can actually point you to the page number. In looking at the eighth page in there. That is correct. And would that be information that you had found through a search of the phone records? Yes. Your Honor, the state, well, let me ask this. Um, in looking at these, and did you assist in preparing these? Yes, I did. And are these helpful as a summary for your testimony here today? Uh, based on the amount of data in the iCloud accounts, they are very helpful, yes. Given that, Your Honor, I would ask for the admission of State's Exhibit 48. Uh, any objection from the defense? Your Honor, we would just uh, like to state for the record that we have objected to all of this information under 404B, uh, and the state has overruled that objection. Okay. But we don't we don't have any objection to this particular one. We just want to, on the record that we had previously objected to this. All right. The court would note that there has previously been. Uh, determinations made on the state's request for evidence under 404B. The court did make a ruling on that at a hearing on February 22nd of this year, and for the reasons incorporated in that decision, uh, it was determined this could be submitted under 404B. Um, in terms of the summary that's been offered as Exhibit 48, without further objection, then. Um, the court will admit Exhibit 48. Your Honor, similar to the last exhibit, there also is a electronic PowerPoint presentation that has been put on a jump drive. We will also mark that and submit it to the court, but we would ask to be able to publish it to the jury at this time. Okay. With it being admitted then, it can be published and we'll keep the actual exhibit will be the PowerPoint digital file on the jump drive.
Detective Duncan, you talked about looking at the Lori for style at iCloud. Yes. When you start looking at that account, does it provide identifying information? So the account information provided by Apple would include uh, information such as the IME, IME number, which is the device ID. Uh, basically, it's a fingerprint for the device associated with that uh, iCloud account. It provides phone numbers associated with the account, and it could also include, include um, recovery email addresses. And with regard to the Lori for Style, did you locate phone numbers associated with that account? Yes, I did. And what were those numbers? The phone numbers are 808-755-5452-480-692-5652-480-489-4652-512-626-2714. Were you able to determine who the Lori for Style at iCloud.com account was linked to? What yes. individual? Yes. And who was that? Uh, the account is is linked to Lori Vallow. Uh, the number of 480-489-4652 um, I recognize is a number that is uh, linked back to her. And, th- and on that iCloud account, were you able to recover some messages that had been sent? I was. Were you able to recover some messages sent between Lori Vallow and Alex Cox? Yes. And looking at that second page, do you recognize those messages? I do. And could you read those, including the dates, into the record? On 3-9 of 2019, Lori sent Alex a message. It says, apparently it is tied to Ned being gone, hopefully today or tomorrow. The following day... 310 2019, Alex sent Lori a message. Love you too. Have fun and get rid of Ned already. 326 2019, Alex sends Lori a message. Ned is still alive. Just confirmed. Lori responded on the same day to Alex It's not Ned, and it's a new one. Through your investigation, were you able to determine who Ned was that they were referring to? So at the beginning of this investigation, or in the following weeks, I apologize, the following weeks, we were informed that uh, Charles was possibly murdered as a result of being a dark spirit um, or a zombie. Uh, We did uh, receive information that uh, and through Charles's uh, contacts and and, uh, conversations with especially Lori, he mentioned that uh, she would refer to him as Ned or Garrett. So uh, those were names through the investigation. We found out that net, that Charles was being referred to, or the spirit in Charles was being referred to. Did you also locate some messages between Lori and some other women on the date of Tammy's death? I did. And looking at that next slide, do you recognize those messages? Yes, I do. And could you indicate who those messages were between and when they were sent and the content of them for the record? So the messages are between Nicole Earl and Lori Vallow, and they are on the uh, 10-19 of 2019. Nicole sends Lori a message at 9-18, says, I'm not sure if you heard, but Chad's wife died last night. Lori responded at 9-33 to Nicole, Oh, my gosh, I did not hear that. I'm in Hawaii, and it's 6 a.m. Lori then responded to Nicole at 9.34. Do you know what happened? Nicole sent Lori a message at 9.37. Yes, she awoke in the night coughing, threw up, collapsed, and passed away. And looking at that next page, do you recognize those messages? Yes, I do. And could you indicate who those messages were between, the date they were sent, and the content of those messages? These messages were between uh, Lori Vallow and Melanie Gibb and dated October 19th of 2019. Melanie sent Lori a message at 13, 16 hours. I heard what happened to Chad's wife. Oh, my gosh. Lori responded to Melanie at 13, 18. Hello, what? And looking at the time on that slide compared to the prior slide, was that later in the day? Yes, it was. 
Did you find any indication in those messages where Lori tells Melanie she's already been informed of Tammy's passing? I did not. Did you also locate messages between or messages sent from Lori to Colby Ryan? Yes, I did. And looking at that next page, do you recognize those messages? I do. Could you indicate the date they were sent, uh, the sender and receiver, and the and read the text of that message? On 11 22 of 2019, there's text messages from Lori Vallow and Colby Ryan. And, uh, or from Lori Vallow to Colby Ryan. Uh, Lori states, I text Ty to send it, but I haven't heard back yet. She will probably just do it before she tells me. Then she then states, Hope you got that. Hope you got the Venmo. Ty said she sent it late. I'll call you when I get a break. Hope you're having a great day. I love you so much. Do you know who the Ty is that they were referring to? That would Objection be. calls for speculation, Judge. We need more foundation for that to be answered, so I'll sustain that for now. Based on your review of the phone and the or the iCloud account and the contents of it, or other iCloud accounts. Would you be able to determine or know who the tie is they were referring to? I would. And who is that? Uh, Tylee Ryan. Then we talked about that you went through another iCloud account. I did. Through searching the Lori for style, like I stated, I was able to uncover a lolly time at iCloud.com. Were you able to determine where, when that lolly time account was created? Yes, I was. When was that? That account was created on July 1st of 2019. And on Charles' phone, when you'd located the messages regarding the affair, do you recall the date that Charles was sending those messages to Lori? I believe that was June 29th of 2019. And then this Lolly Time account is created on July 1st? Correct. Similar to the Lori for Style, were you able to determine any identifying information as to who the account holder was? Yes, this uh, account was actually linked to a different IMEI number, so a different device, uh, but the number of uh, 480-692-9562 uh, was shared between both accounts. And were you able to determine who the owner of this account was? Yeah, based on the examination of this account, uh, photographs, um, correspondence, uh, videos, audio uh, information, the account belonged to Lori Vallow. And in this account, were you able to locate messages between Lori and Alex? I was. <clears throat> and I, I guess to be specific, uh, would that have been Alex Cox? Yes. Going to the, uh, the next page of this, do you recognize those messages? I do. Could you indicate who they were sent to and from the date and read them into the record? Yes. Uh, the text messages or the messages um, from are from Lori Ballow to Alex Cox and dated 7-9-2019, the first one at 13-49 hours. Lori sends Alex a message. So the plot thickens. Call me when you can. Lori then sends Alex a message at later that night at 21.50 or 9.50 p.m. Getting sleepy, so I'm going to need you to stay close to me the next couple days. Mel, too. She can't go to Utah. They are planking some kind of intervention, but want Mel out of the way, so I'm left alone. I need to come to come get the stuff at your house tomorrow and secure it. Lots to do. Thank you for standing by me. It's all coming to a head this week. I will be like Nephi, I am told, and so will you. And are these messages transferred over the way that they were found? They are, yes. Some of the messages may contain typos or spelling errors? Absolutely. When you're looking at different accounts and different devices, are you sometimes looking for the lack of information? Yes, absolutely. Do you compare different information found from 
one device to another or one account to another? Yes. And did you, in fact, do that in this case? I did. And looking at the next page, was there, were there messages, let me back up, was there evidence of messages located in Lori's phone that did not appear in the iClouds? Yes, there was. And looking at, at this and, uh, at this page, were there any that drew your attention? Yes, there are. And could you indicate what those are? So I'm creating a timeline for the death of Charles Vallow, uh, specifically the red messages uh, that were read earlier uh, regarding Al being at the house and when uh, Charles' phone stopped responding or Charles stopped responding to Al. We just created a time frame or kind of a timeline, if you would, of the events that, that happened. Um, there were several messages on Lori's phone, her actual physical phone, not the messages itself, but an indication that a text message was sent that was not located on the iCloud, uh, which is not uncommon. The messages were important to us in our investigation as they are text messages that between Lori and Chad that occurred right before the murder of Charles Allen. Did you also locate additional communications between Lori and Chad on that iCloud account? Yes, I did. And looking at the next page, do you recognize those messages? I do. And could you indicate who was the sender, the receiver, the date, and read the message into the record? Yes. The following are text messages between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell on 7-18. That should be 2019, not 2018. Lori to Chad. I just got the letter from the insurance company saying that I am not the beneficiary. It's a spear through my heart. Who do you think he changed it to, Brandon or probably Kay? He left nothing for JJ. Chad responded to Lori, wow, that's terrible. There's no way to find out. Lori responded to Chad, I might be able to see when I get his computer on Sunday. I could check I the emails sent to the insurance company. It will show change of beneficiary. He must have done it recently. Chad responds to Lori, it seemed you would have to, you would have had to agree to the change. Maybe your name was forged. You should have a good paper trail to prove it. And again, these messages would have actually been sent on July 18th of 2019? Correct. So these messages were exchanged seven days after the death of Charles Vallow? That is correct. Did these messages indicate anything to you as to whether or not Lori seemed to know she was not the beneficiary? Yes. Did it appear that she had just found out she was not the beneficiary? Yes. Did you find any indication that Lori knew she was not the beneficiary of a life insurance prior to Charles' death? Prior to Charles' death, no, nothing. Did the information you found lead you to believe she did not learn she was not the beneficiary until after Charles was deceased? That is correct. And looking at that next page, um, and again, I think it says, July 18th of 2018, that should be 2019? Yes, ma'am. Is that correct? Yes. And are those additional messages that were located? They are. And could you indicate for the record who sent them, who received them, the date, and read them into the record? So on 7-18 of 2019, Chad sent Lori a message. I love you. This is terrible, but it is probably another step in bringing down the Gaddy Antons, especially Brandon. Lori responded to Chad, nope, he can change it anytime he wants. He's the agent, and anyone can change the beneficiary anytime with their own signature. I'm thinking it must be Kay. Chad sent Lori a message, hmm, it will be interesting if he got it changed after he had two bullets in his chest. Was there an additional message located? Yes. 
on 7-18-2019 at 12-19 hours. Lori sent Chad a message. So I talked to the insurance company. He changed it in March. So it was probably Ned before we got rid of him. They can't tell me to who, of course, but it's done. I'll still get the $4,000 a month from SS. Your Honor, I'm going to object to the, um, <clears throat> the actual form of what he just read. Let me review the record briefly here. And, Your Honor, I think I know where counsel's going with this, and we could maybe just have him reread the last line. That'd be fine. Okay. I think a word was added. Let's uh, have him reread that, please, so it's accurate. I'm sorry. I'll still get the 4000 a month from SS. Thank you. Does that? That does comport. Thank you. Thank you. Looking at the next page, do you recognize that message? I do. And can you indicate who had sent that message? Uh, this is a message found on uh, Lori's device, the lolly time from Chad to Lori, dated 7-26-2019 at 8-13 p.m. And could you read it into the record? Tonight I figured out who I feel like. <clears throat> I'm a grown-up version of Harry Potter who has to live with the Dudleys in his little space under the stairs. Every few weeks I get to escape and have an amazing adventure and have amazing adventures with my goddess, lover, but then I have to return to my place under the stairs, feeling trapped. But I sense permanent freedom is coming. And going to the next page, do you recognize that message? Yes, I do. And could you indicate the date that was sent, to whom it was sent, and by whom, and read the text into the record? Yes, so on 7-30, or July 30th, 2019, Chad sent Lori an SMS message that read, I got the inspiration to go back to my original death percentages that helped us track Charles, Ned, etc. Tammy is very close. Her percentage has fallen steadily since Hiplos left. It is encouraging. And we see in there the mention of Ned, who you've already indicated you were able to determine who that was. Does that additional name, Iplos or Hiplos, were you able to determine who that references to? Yes, I was. And who was that? Uh, that that was uh, one of the first names that was associated with uh, a, an evil or dark spirit associated with Charles Fallow was Hiplos. Did you also locate messages between Alex and Lori on that device? Yes, I did. And do you recognize the messages on that screen or the page in front of you? Yes. Could you indicate who sent those to whom they were sent, the date, and read the content into the record? On September 3rd, 2019 at 10.02 a.m., Alex sent Lori a message. Network name is anti Layman. Password is the number two, too many kids. Lori responded to Alex. Funny. And this was sent on September 3rd of 2019? Yes. To the best of your knowledge, were Tylee and JJ missing at that point? Yes, they were. On September 3rd, were they missing? Uh, September 3rd, I'm not sure the exact date and when we started looking for them. I'm you, not sure the... You became involved in the investigation a little later? Yes. Would it have surprised you to learn that they were last seen later in September, Tylee on September 9th and JJ on September 22nd? I don't object to the form of the question. I believe uh, that, well, you know what, I'll just withdraw it. Okay. You know, I'm not sure the exact day that, that they went missing in this case, but I, like I said, I did pick up this investigation uh, later on in, in January. Uh, so. And you had indicated you were aware of the attempted shooting of Brandon at the time you were looking at these accounts. Yes. Do you know the date of the attempted shooting of Brandon Boudreaux? I believe it was October of 2019. Do you recall locating any searches or deleted searches on either of these accounts? I do. 
uh, and were they around the time of the shooting of Brandon, of the attempted shooting of Brandon Boudreau? Yes, they were. Do you recall what they were searches for? Uh, so in, on that day, there was some uh, deleted cookies on her account, and a majority of those searches were for um, uh, news stations in, Ari in Arizona. And were those deleted cookies from October 2nd of 2019? That sounds about right, yes. As part of your investigation, did you also review phone data from an individual named Zulema Pastenis' phone? Yes, I did. Did you locate messages on that phone? I did. And I believe you've already indicated that you also looked at an iCloud account associated with um, Charles Vallow? Yes, I did. Your Honor, I would ask to have the witness shown what's marked as State's Exhibit 51. I believe the court and counsel should have a copy. And to keep the record clear on that last Exhibit 48, we will mark the jump drive with a, an exhibit sticker and submit it to the court as well. All right. Thank you, Ms. Blake. And can the witness be shown that exhibit? Yes. And if you would look through those pages. And do you recognize those? I do. And are those, in fact, messages that you located during your search of Zulema Pastenis's phone and Charles Vallow's iCloud account? That is correct. And did you go over that exhibit with the state? I did, yes. And did you do that in preparation for your testimony here today? Yes, I did. Did you assist in creating that those pages? Yes. And would it be helpful in your testimony today? Yes, it would. Your Honor, with that, I would ask that the exhibit be admitted. Any objection to admission of Exhibit 51? No, we would like to put on the record that we have objected to uh, this particular uh, exhibit and all the information contained therein under 404B, and we understand that our objection was overruled on in February. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thomas. So the court has previously made a ruling under the 404B rule that this evidence is admissible for purposes of trial. The exhibit then without further objection from the defense, Exhibit 51 is admitted. Your Honor, I would ask to be allowed to publish Exhibit 51. You can publish it. And again, for the record, this is similar to the last exhibits where there is a paper copy that has been provided for the court and counsel's convenience. We do have a jump drive with the PowerPoint on, which we will intend to mark with an exhibit sticker and admit. Okay, so that jump drive and digital file will be the actual exhibit, and counsel and the witness may refer to the paper copy so long as it conforms with that digital file. <clears throat> Detective, do you recognize the messages on the screen or on the paper in front of you? I do. And do you recall if those were located uh, from a phone extraction on a device belonging to Salema Pastenis? Yes, they are. Could you read the who, could you indicate who sent the message, who received it, the date, and then read the content of the message into the record? Yes, the first message from Lori Vallow to Zulema Pastenis, dated May 29th, 2019 at 1032 a.m. Perfect. I found out there are four. One is a level four entity. His name is Hiplos. The H is silent. The other three are level threes. Let's do this. Message from Lori Vallow <clears throat> to Zulema Pastenis on June 2nd, 2019 at 1154 a.m. 
Yes, it does. Let's put some fire energy towards Hiplos now. He is driving now, and today is the day. I and I can do it spiritually. Let's go with let's go to him and hover over the truck till we do it. Are you ready? And again, and judge, can we take a brief recess? Yes. I think the state is ready to proceed if the court is ready. Yes, thank you. I apologize for that. We had a power issue. (laughs) I think you already indicated, but did you determine who Hiplos was referring to? Yes, uh, Hiplos was the name of uh, the entity uh, within Charles Vallow. Do you recognize the messages on the next slide? I do. Could you indicate who the sender was, the receiver, the date, and read the content into the record? Yes. The message from Zuloma Pastenis to Lori Vallow, July 2nd, 2019, at 7.52 p.m. Also, I was given instructions today to rip, tear, or burn the aura of Hiplos to let the body energy out so he can't re-enter. The next message is from Chad Daybell to Zalema Pastenas on July 2nd, 2019 at 8.35 p.m. I am very happy to find out these estates. You and Lolo have doing amazing work. Mother Earth is so grateful to you both. Thank you as well for your help with Hiplos. He is so very close. Chad Dable message to Zalema Pastenas July 13th, 2019 at 9.57 a.m. Hi, Zulema. Yes, I would be happy to give you a blessing, possibly this evening or tomorrow. It is crazy about Charles, but such a relief. And in that second message, through your review of accounts and phone records, were you able to determine who Lolo would be referring to? Yes, I was. And who was that? Uh, Lolo was a nickname for Lori Vallo. And that last message was sent... On July 13th of 2019? Yes, it was. And Charles would have already passed away at that point? That is correct. Do you recognize the messages on the next slide? I do. And could you indicate who they were sent from, to whom, the date, and read them into the record? Yeah, the following messages were between Lori Vallow and Zulema Pastenis on June 2nd, 2019. Uh, The messages range from 11.55 a.m. to 12.42 p.m., and they read as follows. Zalema to Lori. I'm ready. Lori to Zalema. Let's go now. Zalema to Lori. That is powerful. I'm still sending fire. Lori to Zalema. Yes, it is. I am blinding him with light. Zalema to Lori. Ooh, that's awesome. Lori to Zulema. I'm feeling it big time. Raphael is with us. Zulema to Lori. I feel him. Lori to Zulema. Did he leave? Zulema to Lori. I can't see him. I felt like I was chasing him because I saw me running after someone. Lori to Zulema. Get him. Zulema to Lori. Oh, I'm chasing. Lori to Zulema. You are amazing, lady. 
I love you. Zulima Talori, I'm tired now. LOL. Lori to Zulima, me too. I'll keep the light, abs, fire, gong till he's gone. Zulima to Lori, me too. I'm still sending it. And with these messages um, that we've gone over today, including this one, are there sometimes emojis attached to those messages? Yes, there are. And these slides did not contain the emojis that were present in the originals. Is that correct? That is correct. We talked previously about the email account kkwalker75 at yahoo.com. Did you locate additional messages linked to that email? I did, yes. And do you recognize the message on the next slide? Yes, I do. Can you read that into the record? Message uh, was sent April 21st, 2019 at 6.20. Dear Brother Daybell, hi, this is Karen from Avow. I contacted you a couple weeks ago to see if you would be willing to come speak to our youth here in Houston, Texas. You said you probably could <clears throat> if there was a way to cover your expenses. Since then, I can't shake the feeling that you need to come share your story, particularly about chasing paradise. We are near the Houston Temple, and this summer our stake is focusing on family history work. My reason for contacting you again is that we have a stake youth conference planned for all day on Saturday, April 27th. The focus is on the temple, and I know you would energize the kids with your stories. We expect about 400 kids to attend, including some parents. I know it is extremely short notice, but is there a chance, but is there any chance you could come? A high councilman is currently the main speaker, but he said he would be happy to let you speak instead. My husband and I have been financially blessed, and we would pay for your flight. We also have a casita attached to our house where you could stay and not be bothered. Also, my daughter mentioned the young single adults would love to put together a fireside on Sunday evening. I realize your main goal is to sell books, and that wouldn't be possible at these events, but I know that the interest in your novels would skyrocket here. I'm sorry it's so late. If possible, please let me know as early as possible in the morning so we can include it in the Sunday announcements. Also, we'd want to get your flights booked. If you are able to do both events, we could fly you in Friday, then depart on Monday. Please let me know if this is possible. We would love it. Karen Walker. And did Chad respond to that email? He did. And on the following slide, do you recognize that, the content of that slide? Yes, I do. And could you indicate who that was from and read the content into the record? The response to that previous email that I read uh, reads, Hello, Karen. Yes, I will be able to come, so let the wards know. I can talk to you later about the arranging, or about, I can talk to you later about arranging the flight, Chad. Do you know where Lori Valla was living on April 22nd of, or April 21st of 2019? Uh, Lori was in Houston, Texas. When you do, when you did your review of these messages, did you, or of these devices and these accounts, did you pass your findings on to other law enforcement? I did, yes. Did you share the phone extractions with other law enforcement? I did, yes. If I can have just a moment. The state has no further questions. 